over there. And I'm guessing that they could well be snoozing for quite some time. You can see their bellies are full, filled with some tasty wildebeest that they snacked on this morning. It was an incredible, incredible chase and hunt, the most exciting that I have been lucky enough to share with you. We had to race after them and stop the vehicle on two occasions once we had caught up, kind of caught up, to the action. And Manu did a great job on camera because the hunt absolutely ambushed us. We were certainly not ready for the action when it unfolded. Oh, Linda, thank you very much for your kind words regarding my hard work. I am fortunate in that my work is something that is very, very cool and that is that makes it very easy to do. So the more time I can spend out in the field with you guys, the happier I am. Gives me an excuse not to check my emails. Well, not really, actually, because we've got Wi-Fi on the vehicle, so that's it's not a good enough excuse. But as long as we're busy on Safari, I guess I can't be checking my mails. And I am loving every moment of it. to Andy, you'd like to know if there is a vehicle limitation per sightings here in the Mara, and uh, not really, but depending on the nature of the sighting, the rangers and researchers are the two people that kind of monitor and police the amounts of vehicles that come into sightings, but there can be a lot of vehicles in sightings here, there's no two ways about it, but thankfully, I mean, it kind of, everyone kind of self-polices one another, occasionally you get somebody who does uh, the wrong things, but, you know, in general, it does work surprisingly well considering how many vehicles can be in a sighting. People generally are quite caring and thoughtful of the animals. So there is no limit here like Juma. Um, so it's quite a different experience regarding that and the vehicles. It's more of a free-for-all. Hello, Will. You are wondering whether it's not dangerous to go out in a completely open vehicle like this. And no, it, it, it's really not. And if we were to wind back the clocks a couple of thousand years and drive a vehicle into a wild wilderness like this, all the animals would flee from it. We are a large, noisy being once we are in the vehicle and quite intimidating. So all wild animals in all wild parks have slowly over many, many years become accustomed to vehicles and us as humans. So they don't see us as a food source. They don't see us as a threat. They merely see us as spectators, which is the best position we could possibly be in with regards to wild animals the less we get involved and the more we leave them to do their business the same they'll do for us so we're not really at risk certainly on foot it becomes a different story but out here at the moment we are safer than you would be in just about any city